Hello, in my previous PPT, I have discussed about soft toric lens fitting. So nowadays, there are various uh, designs of toric which we use, like your 8-4 precision design, your uh, accelerated stabilized design, all this kind of designs we use. Uh, it is used in toric lenses to give the perfect fit and comfort to the patient. Okay. So some designs are there like you can lie on the couch and also you can experience uh, a very crystal clear vision with the story contact lenses. So like uh, so these designs are there in the market only things you need to know and your optometrist will definitely uh, let you aware of all these designs so that your toric lens fits very well in your eyes. So today I'll, but today I'll discuss something about the RGP lenses and I will discuss basically a difference between a soft toric fitting and RGP lens like when to go for RGP lens basically right. So RGP lenses you know all of us know that in, uh, in keratoconus basically we go with RGP lenses in high toric uh, uh, high cylindrical power definitely we uh, go for RGP lenses okay irregular astigmatism we prefer rgp lenses like this and all okay so rgp lens fitting already i have discussed in uh, other uh, lectures so you can go through all these things okay so normally we do a k reading just a quick uh, review of that so normally we do a, a proper k reading okay and uh, flatten uh, we need to de describe uh, like determine the flat and steep k and all okay so our goal is to achieve a lens cornea relationship that touches lightly in the mid periphery 3 to 4 millimeter of the horizontal meridian of the cornea and allow the lens to move in the vertical meridian so these are the actually the key for rgp fitting okay so this you need to maintain to fit a rgp lens properly so the base curve of the lens we uh, like determined with the you by measuring the k reading and a keratometer okay you need a keratometer for rgp lens okay so and diameter we depend on the hvid the same thing okay so the things uh it is we have to for diameter we choose 2.5 smaller than the hvid okay so whatever k we uh, get in our keratometer okay so we can basic base uh, based on that we feed the rgp lenses okay so let's uh, have a very uh, quick uh, go through okay we see the centration coverage movement and alignment of the fluorescent pattern because after feeding an uh, rgp lens first make the patient sit on the slit lamp and see the fitting without fluorescent just see the fit uh, let the patient blink and see the fit and movement okay then you put the fluorescent on and then you check the centration coverage movement and alignment of the fluorescent pattern what are the things we need to see we need to see whether there is a pulling of the fluorescent and or there is a touch of the apical bearing okay so so types of pulling what we see is like a central peripheral pulling um, there may be a horizontal dumbbell vertical dumbbell okay we find a three point touch in case of keratoconus okay so three point touch basically okay this you can see there is a central corneal touch a two mid peripheral touch okay and there is a peripheral touch so that is a three point touch what we get in case of a keratoconus patient normally for a normal patient with high astigmatism what we get is a diffuse fit okay we normally do not get this three point touch three point touch is found in keratoconus patient so that is that's what we aim when we fit a keratoconus patient okay so diffuse pattern whatever is a proper fit whatever we get in an rgp but if you can fit the proper lens properly when you are practicing on normal patients you can get a diffuse pattern that is a thing so in steep fitting there will be a central pulling okay you can see a mid peripheral band will be very minimal and peripheral band will be width will be less than 0.25 mm there may be bubble formation okay 
so these are all which you you know the flat feet what will be there there will be a central touch a mid peripheral touch and peripheral band width will be more than 0.50 mm okay so basically you will get a central touch that's what you find in a flat feet okay and there will be definitely a high lens movement in idle feet you find at either a three point touch like this in keratoconus or you get a diffuse pattern that's it what we get in an idle feet you all know all these things i have discussed uh, in my previous lectures in rgp lens fitting the vision will remain clear before and after blink if the vision clears after blink there is a stiff feet if the vision blurs there is a flat feet so you can reduce the or modify the diameter of the rgp lens okay all thing everything you have to uh, like if you want to reduce the diameter suppose you have fit uh, fitted a patient with a 10 mm diameter lens okay but you want to order a 9.20 diameter so these are a challenging one why because uh, things you need to keep in mind is like 0.3 mm change in the base curve is equal to 0.5 mm change in the diameter so all these things you need to keep in mind okay so if you want to modify the diameter always go whatever diameter lens you are fitting on the patient try to order that uh, lens so that will be the correct one basically okay so this the things you always we do for our rgp lens fitting and all so now let me come uh, to the things like what are the things uh like you need to know whether a rgp lens is better or a softer lens better see for keratoconus i will tell uh, early keratoconus sometimes we fit with a softer lens also but in moderate keratoconus and all if you fit with a softer lens what will be the problem the patient's vision won't be stable see for normal astigmatism a uh, sub a uh, higher astigmatism you can uh, guess like 2.25 2.75 astigmatism is there so that case is also your normal softoric will definitely be definitely be good okay but for keratoconus a patient okay if you like put a softoric as the astigmatism is not regular okay so that is the reason you will not get a proper fit of the softoric contact what you can do for the patient you can actually for uh, like uh, first grade of keratoconus you can give a softoric lens trial give a softoric lens trial tell the patient to wear it for one month and see whether the patient's vision is stable vision is patient is complaining or not and all these things then only go and order a softoric for a keratoconus patient the otherwise we always prefer an rgp lens prefer a rgp lens over the softoric lens for keratoconus patient okay because the fit always varies okay in case of keratoconus patient so these things you need to keep in mind so whether to go for a softoric or a rgp lens okay thank you